And we're ready whenever you are, Mayor. Okay. Good evening and thank you for attending tonight's city uh, council meeting. <clears throat> for those who are attending remotely, the camera in the uh, council chambers is set up to show those attending in person tonight. The platform we are using has a raise hand feature. You will notice a picture of a hand in the upper right hand corner. When we reach the point in the meeting where the public has the opportunity to address council, you can click the button and be given your opportunity to address council. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scali. Here. Councilor Dillabaugh. Here. Councilor Fisher. Here. Councilor Kennedy. Here. Councilor Powers. Here. Councilor Reesh. Here. Councilor Scamperly. Here. Quorum present. We have one presentation tonight regarding the 2023 first quarter financial statement from City Comptroller Angela Gray. Good evening. Prepared in advance was the or is the first quarter report of budget versus actual operations within the city. Um, it's a condensed version that kind of shows each department where you are with your spending and how much is left in the budget um, after, and also it shows the total revenue projected versus what we've recorded. So starting with the revenue in the general fund, we have a budget of approximately 13.9 million of which we recorded 1.1 million. Um, just to stop there and talk a little bit about the revenue, um, it's difficult, uh, as we all know, our largest source of revenue, one of the largest is sales tax. Um, for the first quarter 2022, we were still on the sharing agreement in part with St. Lawrence County. And um, in 2023, the numbers represented in revenue equal just preempted sales tax. So those numbers have a big difference in them. Um, year to date sales tax in this report is $404,000, um, whereas at the same time last year it was 1.1 million. So if we isolate revenue out of the to uh, sales tax revenue out of the total revenue collected, our revenue is has increased slightly over prior year. And some of those increases that we are seeing is that in 2023 we have a contract with Augsburg City School District for one SRO. That's new or re reinstated revenue into the 2023 budget. Um, one of the areas we're also seeing a large increase in revenue is interest. Uh, we have invested money with the New York class accounts. And this time last year, the daily yield was 0.4%, whereas this year it's 4.8%. So we're making sizable interest in comparison to last year where we were. Uh, we also have an increase of interfund revenue that was budgeted for that's coming over from the water and sewer fund. <clears throat> As we look through, um, we first, I'm sorry, yes, and we haven't collected any. Excuse property. me. We haven't collected any property tax. Yet. We have not. That is in the month of April. Which so is, this just goes through March. Which is four million, five million now. Four and a half, I believe, was the budget on that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you will see that in the April report, all as accrued revenue. Um, going through, we um, there's really no large unexplained anomalies to point out through the general fund. Um, our largest expenditures being personal services. Most departments um, still have 75% remaining in that budget line, which is where you would expect to be at this time of year. Um, our Year-to-date deficit in the general fund is 1.6 million, and that just has a lot to do with timing and that we haven't recorded any property taxes, which is our largest source of revenue, and that will come in the month of April. <clears throat> as far as the water fund goes, um, 
we've collected 10% of the revenue in that fund. Our expenses are where we would expect them to be. And that year to date has a deficit of $264,000. Switching to the last page of the report is the sewer fund. And we have collected about 22% of the revenue in that fund year to date. The billing cycles in those two funds are different. <clears throat> so the sewer is always billed uh, sooner. And therefore, um, looking at the personal services, again, your largest expenditure, um, we have about 75% on average left in every category. I would draw your attention to Department 9710 in the sewer fund. Um, there was a debt service payment of $683,000, and that was a, the first payment on the sewer debt. Any questions? We saved about 800000 in the sewer fund through a grant that we got. We will. So if you look at the sewer fund report, um, Department 8120 has equipment and capital outlay budgeted at $1.8 million. And we will, when that project hits, um, we will also bring in $800,000 of revenue that um, will offset that $1.8 million of expenses. On the tax warrant, um, I mean, as long as we're talking about revenue and stuff. Uh, so our levy for this year was $4.7 million. Then it lists delinquents, tax relevy, water, sewer, and miscellaneous, which is $1.3 million or 28.69% of the levy. That is, is correct. Is that an indication of um, people's ability to pay or people, is it, a, it seems like a pretty, I'm sure some of it will get paid eventually. I don't, I don't know how much, but what is it, isn't that high for a community? The reason why uh, this year's tax warrant looks different than it has in the past is our situation is different in the city of Ogdensburg. Previously, um, we relied on the sale of tax sales tax certificates, and that's how we've collected the delinquent city and county taxes. So in this particular year, um, the city does not have foreclosure authority. And so they're actually relevying the taxes, which is something that um, hadn't necessarily been done in the past because we collected them a different way. So that $889,000 is two years of school taxes that remained unpaid by city taxpayers and one year of city and county um, taxes that were unpaid at the end of the year. Again, the number is so great because this is the first year we've done this type of relevy because we've always relied on the city's foreclosure authority to collect this $885,000 number. Is that, is that a high number though? Twenty. The When you break down the uncollected taxes, no matter what the collection method is, it's average with what usually flows through either a tax sales certificate process or this relevy process. And we're still waiting for the decision on the uh, county. That is correct. And and that will only affect a portion of that. They'll be re if if we're successful, they'll be responsible for city and county, well, city city only, but not school district. I, I think it's still up to the That's court. That's I would just have to wait for that matter to be cleared legislatively or um, the, the court. through the court system before we determine what we're responsible for versus what the county's responsible for. Great. Thanks, Andy. You're welcome. We have two proclamations tonight. Before I read the first one, St. Lawrence County Board of uh, Realtors, President Elizabeth Trago, uh, would like to say a few words. Good evening, Mayor Skelly and members of the Ogdensburg City Council. 
My name is Liz Trago, and I am the president of the St. Lawrence County Board of Realtors. I am here to thank you for your continued commitment to the fair housing in North, the North Country. On April 11, 1968, President Lyndon Johnson signed the Fair Housing Act into law. Unfortunately, discrimination cannot be eliminated with the stroke of a pen. <clears throat> In the 55 years since the signing, many people have worked to help bring the dream of equal access to housing a reality. The National Association of Realtors and the associations affiliated with it, like the New York State Association of Realtors and the St. Lawrence County Board of Realtors are working hard to make this a reality. The Realtor Fair Housing Program provides resources and guidance to realtors to help ensure equal professional services to all people. Not all licensed real estate brokers, appraisers, and salespersons are realtors. Only those licensed real estate professionals who are members of the National Association of Realtors and a local association like the St. Lawrence County Board of Realtors can call themselves realtors. They conduct their business and activities in accordance with a strict code of ethics. Within the code is Article 10, which provides that realtors shall not deny any professional services to any person for reasons of race, color, religion, sex, disability, familial status, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. Realtors shall not be parties to any plan or agreement to discriminate against a person or persons on the basis of race, color, religion, sex, disability, familial status, national origin, sexual orientation, or gender identity. A realtor pledge to conduct business in keeping with the spirit and with the letter of the Code of Ethics. Article 10 imposes obligations upon realtors and is a firm statement of support for equal opportunity in housing. The sale and purchase of a home is one of the most significant events that any person will experience in his or her lifetime. It is more than simply purchasing a home. It includes the hopes, dreams, aspirations, and economic destiny of those involved. On behalf of our association and its membership, I want to thank each and every one of you for your continued affirmations over the years to the principles of fair housing. Together, we can ensure that all area residents continue to have access to affordable, barrier-free housing. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll read the proclamation now. Whereas April 11th, 2023 marked the 55th uh, anniversary of the passage of the Fair Housing Act, which enunciates the national policy of fair housing for all who live in the United States. And whereas the Fair Housing Act prohibits discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, disability, familia, status, or and uh, national origin, and whereas New York State additionally prohibits discrimination because of creed, age, sexual orientation, marital status, or military status, and whereas fair housing is a positive uh, community good, and whereas economic stability, community health, and human relationships in all com communities are improved by diversity and integra integration and whereas fair housing is integral to the ethical commitment of members of the National Association of Realtors and the United and the St. Lawrence uh, Council Bo uh, County Board of Realtors, <clears throat> and it is critical to the ability of all real estate professionals to serve their clients, customers, and communities. And whereas <clears throat> acts of housing discrimination and barriers to equal housing opportunity are repugnant to the common sense and decency of fairness. Therefore, I, Jeffrey M. Skelly, Mayor of the City of Augsburg, do hereby proclaim the month of April 2023 as Fair Housing Month in Augsburg, New York, to establish Augsburg as an inclusive community committed to fair housing and to promote promote appropriate activities by private and public entities intended to provide or advocate for equal housing opportunities to all residents and all pr prospective residents in the city of Augsburg.
And we have a second proclamation. And this is for our Carver Day. Could I have the, um, the proclamation for Kathy? Mayor, could you pass them down to me, please? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than 1 million trees in Nebraska and Arbor Day, Arbor Day is known, <clears throat> is now observed throughout the nation and the world. And whereas trees reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, uh, cut heating and cooling costs, moderate the temperature, clean the air, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. Whereas trees are renewable, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase our property values, enhance our economic vi viability in business areas, and beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. And whereas the city of Augsburg has been recognized as a tree city USA by the National Arbor Foundation, and desires to continue its tree planting practices. Now, therefore, <clears throat> I, Jeffrey M. Skelly, Mayor of Ogdensburg, do hereby proclaim April 28, 2023 as Arbor Day in the city of Ogdensburg. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and to support the efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. And furthermore, I urge all citizens to plant trees to gladden the heart and promote the well-being of this and our future generations. <clears throat> Pass that down. Mayor, are you going to discuss the Arbor Day celebration in Augensburg on Friday? Did you plan to touch on that? I, I didn't. Uh, I didn't have anything. I didn't know there was a, um, there was a planning while I was at it last year. Um, on Friday, out front of the police station, the Arbor Day um, will be planting a tree in honor of Scott Reed. Um, that was a member and a sergeant at the Ogdensburg Police Department. So if any members of the community wanted to attend, that is right out front of the police station at 10 a.m. on Friday. <clears throat> Thank you. We have uh, one public hearing tonight regarding an ordinance amending chapter 209, section 209-54, schedule 17, time limit parking of, of Ogdensburg Municipal Code. It's going to be bill number 37, and I will open that to public hearing now. Anyone attending? In person would like to come down. You have five minutes at the podium. Anyone attending remotely? The first individual is registered as Debbie Strader, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears you are self muted. <clears throat> Ms. Strader, it appears you are self muted. Not sure how you want to proceed, Mayor. Uh, it's probably a mistake. <clears throat> I will uh, declare this public hearing closed. Is there there were there were not oh, anymore, more. sir. At this time, anyone attending in, in person would like to address the council. Please come down to the podium, and you have five minutes. Thank you. My name is Margaret Haggerty from the city. Welcome, Mr. Buhari. We haven't met yet. At the last 
than 10 minute city council meeting of April 6, 2023, the mayor read a resolution to implement a hiring freeze for the city of Ogdensburg. Note that he read the city, man the city manager shall not propose, create, or fill any personnel positions during the remainder of the 2023 fiscal year. He was asking city clerk to start a vote when an interruption occurred, asking to have some discussion about the proposed resolution. It was brought up that certain language in the resolution violates our city charter, takes away the city manager's authority to do his job. This is governing by fiat, as that's a quote. Um, and then another quote is a complete joke and mockery of departments of the city manager, department of the city manager. There was no clear response to the questions posed about staffing resources we may need. When asked if this resolution was vetted by the city attorney, mayor assured us that it was and that the attorney is fine with the language of the resolution. Citizens clearly did not agree with the resolution, which was passed as usual by the four on council who are collectively mocked as the majority yet don't appear to represent the majority of our city. This appears to be a retaliatory effort because of the hiring of two firefighters, the majority has been fighting all along in spite of clear and convincing input from fire chief and the union president that this would be cost saving on a number of levels. Because of the above and the highly and its highly controversial nature, I foiled for documentation about the city attorney having vetted the resolution. I was pleased to receive a, a virtually immediate response from the city clerk that I would hear back from her by April 21st. As we know, this is weeks, sometimes months, faster than FOILs we have submitted during recent years. My FOIL request was denied because, quote, disclosure would violate attorney-client privilege. And then uh, note, I have some screenshots that I wanted to read here that our, in our, under our city attorney's powers and duties on our website, the city attorney shall be the legal advisor of and attorney for the city, that with a capital C, the city council, the city manager, and all city departments, bureaus, boards, and commissions, et cetera. And then just in case anybody needs to know the definition of city, from uh, Miriam Webster calls it, the people of the city is one of the definitions. And then um, from dictionary.com, if people feel that might be more credible, the word city is also used to refer to all the people who live in this kind of place or something that is related to such a place. I took advantage of the opportunity to appeal the denial to the city manager on the grounds that the mayor was discussing city business with the attorney and that I as a resident am a client in the same group. Approval of my FOIL request does not therefore violate attorney client privilege, therefore, I slash we eagerly await approval and related response to my FOIL. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Uh, good evening, I'm Michael Tooley. I live at 214 Hampton Street. And as a citizen, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you this evening. My comments tonight focus on the preliminary 2023 property assessments based on GAR Associates citywide reassessment. One of the goals in going forward with this reassessment was achieving an equalization rate for the city of 100%. The equalization rate in uh, 2022 was 96%. So to measure achievement of this goal, I try to determine the increase in city property assessments through this reassessment. When I went to the GAR Associates website, Nowhere could I find a total for the uh, taxable assessable value based on all the individual assessments that, that have been modified. So I made an attempt to uh, calculate that number on my own. Um, and uh, just, just so people know, uh, schedules I prepared were in some detail, so I provided them to council in advance of this meeting to help, uh, help with the discussion. Um, in a, in, a, in a news report on Channel 7, um, before he resigned, the prior assessor indicated that had the 2023 reassessment numbers uh, been used in the uh, allocation of the uh, tax bills in 2022, that the tax rate would have been $12.50 per assessed thousand. So in Exhibit 1, in the top left, 
Uh, I did the calculation of the property tax levy of $4.7 million by 1250, and I come up with an estimated preliminary assessment of $379,708. Now this compares to the 2022 assessment of $286,000, which means that the uh, assessment increase at this point stands at 32.7%. Now, uh, I, I confess I'm not an assessor. I'm not familiar with the guidelines or regulations that determine assessments. But as, as, a, as a lay person, um, you know, 96% meant that we were undervalued of our market value by 4%. So I, I don't know why we need a 32% increase in assessments to achieve an equalization rate of 100%. It seems to me that that number, that 100% equalization rate can be achieved with a lower increase in assessments. So having said that, uh, on the second, on the right-hand side of exhibit one, I, I gave a suggestion. Um, you know, what, where might we go with an increase in city assessments that might get us to 100%, not only for, for the current year, but for the foreseeable future. And so the, the number I came up with was a 10% increase from 286 million to 314 million. To achieve that, based on the uh, total current increase of $93.5 million, if we reduce that by 70%, we could achieve a 10% increase as the target assessment. And if it falls short slightly of the equalization rate of 100%, I don't know if there's great harm in that. I provided to you also in Exhibit 3, a listing of the assessment, sorry, the equalization rates by county throughout the state in 2022. And you can see from that that 70% of the municipalities in New York State are below 100% equalization rate. So, so if we set a, a target or a cap on how high the equalization rate would go, or excuse me, the assessment increase would go in 2023, um, again, I'd like to think we could hit a number that would achieve 100% ER, but but we're not necessarily harmed by that. Okay, next I, I wanna speak about the impact of where we stand right now with the assessment increase on the allocation of uh, Oxford City School uh, taxes for the 23-24 year. Um, the city or the school district and talking to Mr. Kendall, when they proposed their budget for 23-24, the total tax levy in round numbers would be $10.6 million, which has been the same levy they've had the last four years. So no matter what the assessment assessable value goes to, the total revenue they're looking for in taxes isn't changing. However, what does change though, with a 32% increase in assessments, is the percentage of the total tax that falls to the city of Ogdensburg. Currently, uh, in the 22-23 school year, Augsburg pays about 75% of the total school tax levy. And that's based on their percentage of the true value of the total true value in the school district. If we proceeded with a 32% increase in assessment, the percentage increase for Augsburg in terms of full value would increase to 77.6%. And what it would result in is an increase in school taxes within the city of $325,000. Would you like to just Mac at the end of the meeting? I, or may I'm, I continue? Yes, please. I'm trying to get Thank you. There might be others. Yes, please. I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, so, Ostergaard would pay $325,000 less, Augsburg would pay $325,000 more. And again, it doesn't make sense to me if we can achieve an equalization rate of 100%. At, a, at an increase of, of, of $20, $20 million, why go to $90 million? And so on the right-hand side of Exhibit 2, I ran schedules with regards to if we, if we, if we did a 10% increase in assessments within the city, it ends up Augsburg would end up paying about what they do now, about 74.2% uh, in school taxes. So, so the numbers uh, basically would be the same as they are in 2023. So, uh, and then to conclude, other options that might be considered. Um, if we're gonna to have to have a total increase of $93 million, perhaps that can be spread out over a period of time, maybe five to seven years. Another alternative 
possibly consider keeping assessments at 2022 levels for one year, allowing our next assessor the opportunity to review the assessments calculated by GAR for each city property during the next year to see if modifications are needed. A significant change, just as the city is facing, should not be rushed, only allowing taxpayers, city council, city administration six to eight weeks to deal with it. So just to conclude, another option other than what is currently proposed, I believe, must be considered. Thank you. Anyone else? First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the uh, our new city manager that uh, made a presentation at a recent St. Lawrence County uh, Board of Legislators meeting to uh, take the first step to try to bury the hatchet between city relations and the county relations. Uh, it's a step in the right direction, and it shows uh, some real good leadership skills as, as a taxpayer. And I, I personally would like to thank you. The following is a resolution I'd like to read on behalf of many, many, many citizens of the city of Augensburg, including some of your staunch supporters and some not your supporters. Whereas this majority-led administration has chosen to ignore all counsel on the St. Lawrence County sales tax and repayment of debt and caused the city over $2 million in monetary loss and damaged relations with the county. Whereas this majority-led administration has caused an unknown number of lawsuits draining our finances because of unlawful, unethical, and the celibate defamation of our citizens. Whereas this majority-led administration has played with charter, established rules and regulations at will and without justification. Whereas this majority-led administration has ignored all counsel and pursued the legal path of breaking the contract with the fire department, costing the city almost $1 million in legal fees and overtime costs. Whereas this majority-led administration has cut our police force to the point where overtime costs are mounting, our streets are less safe, and our officers are working to the point of exhaustion with three-man shifts sometimes too. Whereas this majority-led administration has fueled a circus media frenzy that has led to the embarrassment and humiliation of our city. Whereas this majority-led administration has chosen to pursue the opening of a beach that was already proven to be not viable at a cost that, that was not transparent. Where this majority-led administration has wasted $32,000 on the pickleball court that they knew was going to be torn down with the Ready Project. Whereas the Ready Project has many monetary overruns costs due to time management of the Ready Grant and caused the city to use an already meager fund balance rather than to flow to buy Whereas a $6 million fund balance was reduced to a $2 million deficit within two months with no supporting details to the public. Whereas this citizens of this city are questioning the end game of this majority administration. Whereas bankruptcy of the city of Augsburg seems to be the goal of this majority administration. Since the majority has made it known that they will not run for re-election, the request for this resolution is for this black voting majority administration to step down so as the citizens can replace them with administrators who have the best interest in Augensburg at heart. Hello, my name is Brenda Hill. I live at Two Grove Street. Um, I have a question. I'd like to know when you're going to untie the new city manager that moves from so far away here to do his job and then only to have his hands tied to maybe get some more policemen on. Perhaps we could get the um, drug control or drug officer off of answering the phone at the desk and maybe get him back on the street where he belongs. On um, St. Patrick's night, I live across the street from 11 Grove Street, which everybody in Nogginsburg knows it's a, it's a drug house. <clears throat> Heard some arguing going on outside over my furnace, over my TV. I went to my back door to look to see what was going on. There was a truck that had backed out of the driveway. No lights, big pickup truck. There was a person standing in the road, one standing between the grass and the sidewalk, or the road and the sidewalk. And the other one walked over into the driveway. And when he walked over into the driveway, the truck pulled in the yard and hit him. Intentionally hit him. 
what is it going to take to get more police on so that we can get the drugs in Augensburg taken care of? Are we going to have to start taking care of our own neighborhoods? That's my question. I mean, I'd be happy to. It ain't going to be pretty, but I'd be happy to. We need more cops on the road so that we can have some safe neighborhoods. My neighborhood is not safe. If I could have had the time, I would have asked the cops how many times they've been in my neighborhood to pick up needles. The people from 11 Grove Street come over to my property to pick up branches to take them back over to 11 Grove Street. What the hell are they doing with them? I don't know. Don't care to know. But they're dropping needles on my property. I have a four-year-old grandson that comes up to see me. I have an animal. I have friends that come and bring their children. So help me God, if somebody steps on one of those needles and something happens to these people, there's going to be hell to pay. Because I personally will go over to 11 Grove Street and I will do something. I am that pissed right now that there that I call the police station. I called City Hall first. She told me to call the police station. I called the police station. Guess who answered the phone? The drug task officer is answering the phone. What the hell is he doing being a receptionist? Come on. Untie this man's hands so that he can do what we need done and put more cops on the road to take care of it. Perhaps, perhaps some of you would like to move into my neighborhood and see what goes on. The traffic is ridiculous. The backpacks that walk up and down the street with the drugs. Unbelievable. Who wants to come to my house instead? Mr. Skelly, would you like that in your neighborhood? I know you're not going to answer me. Ooh. Well, I wouldn't like it in mine. I, I blame, I, you know, I mean, anybody can come to my house any day or any time and see what goes on over there. Unbelievable. The other day when I was leaving my house, I went to New York app to go right. I had this great, big, beautiful, white outlander come by, almost took the front of my car. Guess where he went? To the drug house. He was in a hurry to get his drugs. Come on. So I'm going to ask you one more time. When will you untie this man's hands so that he can put some more officers back on and get rid of the drugs before something happens? This time it was a truck that hit that guy head on. Head on. What's it going to be next time? A gun? Is it going to be a knife? Is it going to end up on my property? If it does, there's going to be hell to pay. I guarantee it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Anyone attending remotely? I do not see any hands raised. And this brings us to correspondence. I believe we have one letter. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Buhari, as you know, school safety continues to be a top priority of the Ogdensburg City School District, and I know the City of Ogdensburg feels the same way. The School Resource Officer Program is an excellent opportunity for the Ogdensburg Police Department to form positive relationships with the faculty, staff, students, and parents, as well as helping to provide our students with the safest and most secure learning environment possible. The Ogdensburg City School District Safety Committee met last evening to discuss changes and suggestions for the 2023-2024 District Safety Plan. The committee recommended that the Board of Education provide funding for two additional school resource officers, thus having an SRO in each of the district school buildings. As you know, in all active shooter scenarios, the one thing that is most effective in saving lives is the amount of time it takes for law enforcement to be on scene to stop the threat. As we've done in the past, the Ogdensburg City School District will provide the full cost of all three school resource officers and it will not impact the city's expenses. I thank you for your hard work and dedication on behalf of the students and staff of the Ogdensburg City School District. 
I look forward to continuing to grow our partnership and to provide our students in all schools a safe and secure building each and every day. Please reach out to me as soon as possible regarding the plan for additional SROs. Sincerely, Kevin Kendall, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you, Kathy. Next, we have our consent agenda that the claims is enumerated in general fund warrant number 7-2023 in the amount of $1,026,680.51 and library warrant number 7-2023 in the amount of $0 and capital fund warrant number 7-2023 in the amount of $1,779,912.92 and community development warrant number 7-2023 in the amount of $45 and community renewal fund warrant number 7-2023 in the amount of $0 as audited being the same hereby or ordered paid. I so move. I'll second it. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scali? Yes. Councilor Dillaba? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Powers? Yes. Councilor Reich? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Approved. We have two appointments. I make a motion to appoint Ryan Frary to a five year term on the Board of Assessments and Review, term to begin April 24th, 2023 and end September 20th, 2028. I so move. Second. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Powers? Yes. Councilor Reach? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scully? Yes. Councilor Dillabaugh? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Approved. Uh, Kathy, I don't have any information on the second appointment. Would you, do you have that? Do you have that? Would you read it? If you do? I'm sorry, Mary. Do you want me to read it? It just says the appointment of Edwards, Dr. Edward Smith to a three-year term on the Tree Commission term to begin April 24, 2023 and end April 24, 2026. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councilor Reich? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Councilor Delabaugh? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Powers? Yes. Approved. And this brings us to items for council action. Our first item of business will be read by city manager, Mohadeen Buhari. I would like to propose the ordinance to amending chapter 209, section 209.54, schedule uh, 17 time limit parking of the offense for the school for bill number 37. I'll move, move that. It. Second. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Co Mayor Scully? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? <clears throat> yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Reich? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by City Comptroller Angela Gray. This is a resolution to approve the 2023 tax warrant. I'll move that. I'll that. Thank you. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Mayor Scali? Yes. Councilor Delaba? Yes. Councilor Fisher? Yes. Councilor Kennedy? Yes. Councilor Powers? Yes. Councilor Reich? Yes. Councilor Scamperly? Yes. Approved. Our next item of business will be read by City Manager Mohadeen Buhari. I would like to propose a resolution exempting the position of acting official from the Tyree Creek and appointing the Stephen Teal as acting assistant pursuant to the Real Property Act, Tax Law 3114. Whereas, in the event that an assessor appointed pursuant to the provision of Section 310 of this title is unable to perform the duties of the office or the office becomes vacant, the appointing authority may by resolution designate or appoint an acting assessor. And whereas, 
the position of city assessor was vacated by resignation on April 20th, 2022. Therefore, it is resolved that the city of Augsburg City Council here, hereby approve the appointment of Eagle Field to the position of acting assessor effective immediately until such time a qualified replacement is appointed. I see the I'll move that. I'll second. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Reich? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Approved. Our next item in business will also be read by City Manager Mohadeen Buhari. Yes, I would like to propose a resolution extending the position of DPW student worker, lifeguard, head lifeguard, recreation attendant, recreation leader, and water waste treatment plant operator training from the hiring trees. Move that. I'll second it. Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Fisher? Yes. Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Reich? And all these are budgeted positions? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Councillor Yes. Mayor Scali. Yes. Councillor Dillaba. Yes. Approved. And now this brings us to new business. Does anyone have any new business? Old business. Old business. Um, I have old business. It's in related to the SRO. I brought it up um, at the special meeting for the hiring freeze, and we have the information from the. Um, Superintendent of Schools. I didn't know if the police chief could maybe shed some light on what the what that would look like for the city of Ogdensburg. I mean, I think it's great that they want to fully fund two additional SROs. I just want well, to know on our end what it looks like. Absolutely. Well, the benefits we would get out of it as a as a city is, um, I get two additional officers, well, three in total, because I already paid for one SRO. So I'd have three additional officers that we get all summer long, um, every school break, every night and weekend. And that would be funded by the school district. Correct. They pay, um, currently, they pay every single penny for the current SRO. And um, as what well, Mr. Kendall just sent to um, city council, um, they're apparently going to pay every penny for the uh, additional SROs and um, from conversations I've had with the, the school district, that's what they what they want to do. So, yeah, it's like having part-time officers is what the city will get out of it. At during no the school year. During the school year, they'll be part-time and full-time during the summer. Right. Yep. Not only that, um, even Collins. Working yes. with the SROs, you know, in the school districts, the amount of intel they get about drugs and other things happening with kids, they build a good rapport with kids while they're at school. So when the kids grow up, you know, they have a lot more respect for uh, police officers. And if Absolutely. The situation going on around this country right now, uh, we need a little bit more respect. In our yeah, and, and they handle cases too. Uh, currently, our SRO has a, a caseload just like any other officer does. Uh, they handle a lot of crimes that are uh, either committed by a juvenile or um, where the juvenile is the victim. And uh, with three SROs, that's that much less work that our officers on the road um, would have to handle. As long as it's an Augensburg City uh, School District student, I don't see why the, the school board wouldn't be on board with uh, that being a wonderful idea. And what does that look like, a time frame for hiring those officers? Because obviously, our officers are already overextended in the city. What does it look like in terms of hiring to fill these positions? And obviously we wouldn't want to put a brand new officer into the school system because then that would kind of infringe on their training process and you would want a little more experience in the school district because they would not gain the street experience as a new Correct. officer. I would not put a new officer out at the school district. Um, I do have senior officers that are interested in the positions. Um, if this was something to happen. Um, if it's a senior officer, would they pay the senior officer pay or would they pay the starting pay? Well, currently um, we had Officer Shaver out there the last, this current school year. Mm -hmm. He's one of our senior officers. So, that so, was not an issue. so essentially we would be 
have the opportunity to have some of our larger payrolls absorbed with a smaller payroll coming in as a starting officer, that which would great. decrease the operating costs for the police department I mean, on our end. Obviously, I would seek out transfers before I would right. seek out uh, necessarily a new hire, so maybe we'd be paying a little bit higher salary than a brand, brand new officer, but not one of our, our senior guys, not a seven, eight year officer who's topped out or nearly topped out in pay. That would that would come from the Ogdensburg City School District, though. That is correct. So even if you were to bring in a, a, a transfer that's already trained and ready to hit the ground, all costs are picked up by the school school system. Correct. Well, the school system, you know, they they never followed the recommendations of hiring retirees. They could have had all the schools protected for the same cost as one officer if they had hired retirees. Right, but we're not here well, to I, discuss. I believe, well, I believe we're here to discuss law, the chief might be able to correct me if I'm wrong. One, I think the position has to be a police officer. A retired police and officer. Just, yeah, you could you get the training. There's, there's ways around it. But if they're saying they, they want to pay for them, why wouldn't you just day. give them what they want? Well, we do pay school taxes too, and we have the highest. So you're not here to discuss school taxes. That same officer trained. Nicole, we discuss everything, just not just what you want. Um, oh, I didn't realize it's so, a show. Here we go. So the, the fact is, uh, how many how many schools are the the sheriffs uh, taking care of now? I believe SROs? three. Three. I believe three. Well, do you know what the schools are, Chief? Uh, Hubleton, I believe Edwards Knox, and Herman DeKalb. And that would, you know, if they did ours, they would be. It would carry on that legacy costs for you know for, for the future of the guess, city when we were a, a big shortfall now that shortfall is going to grow i guess my question would be if the school district's willing to pay for three police officers yeah not, and I, honestly mayor i need the help though i need the help on the road uh, and we can take my advantage of that help those those resources. Resources. it's two more guys that can work in the off year. over time available to help out they can work that airport overtime they can work at that shift overtime and doesn't cost us anything i think we need to lift this uh, right. people. so what's a retired officer got to do with this fact that the school district's going to pay for three police officers they, they could have hired three uh retired well, police officers for ninety thousand dollars obviously and, but they uh, don't want to somewhere but it's because it doesn't school, seem to think, matter to them how much to it costs three now the question was brought up as to whether or not that's acceptable. Uh, can a retired police officer carry a gun in the school if he's not working for the Augsburg Police Department? Is there any other state laws that discuss this? They can, certainly, but that doesn't alleviate the workload to the Augsburg Police Department because right. we still have to investigate every crime that occurs at the school. We still have to train everyone on active shooter drills out there. Um, Basically, the retired guy gives the school district um, somebody with a gun. They don't get the full functions of a police officer, someone to investigate mm -hmm. crimes. Um, you get someone to deter crime, which is part of the job, a huge part of the job for sure. But um, we don't get that bang for the buck. Right? And it, doesn't, it doesn't establish the relationship because... Right. That retired officer is not uh, establishing a good rapport with the students who in, in turn are dealing with the officers out on the road after school um, out in the community. If you see a familiar face when something right. unfortunate happens to your family, it's it's more comforting. Right. And Right now our, our school resource officers, um, there's a, every juvenile that's a victim of a crime has to be interviewed by what's called the Child Advocacy Center. Um, that's over in Canton or Watertown. Sometimes they have a mobile RV and they bring it right here in Augensburg. And our school resource officer sits in those interviews um, with the forensic interviewers, part of that investigation. And we're not going to get that out with a retired part-time officer. And again, it's that's work that I would have to be taking someone off my shift to go and sit in on these interviews. And, which would um, create more overtime. Which creates more work, more overtime. So um, I'm not in favor. I'll just put that out there publicly. I'm, I'm not in favor of part-time officers for for anything at, at this point in time. Um, the liability and the training doesn't stop. Uh, it's not any less, I should say, for a part-timer than what it is for a full-timer. And the requirements and the training requirements um, become more and more on us daily. And 
uh, every agency out there is getting away from part-timers, the sheriff's office included. They just stopped with their part-timers because of that very fact. <laughs> I think we have to have, need uh, to accept this. Uh, we yeah. need to have a resolution. The citizens are speaking. The citizens are begging us to put more police on the on the roads and on the streets. And even if they're part time, uh, we we just can't ignore this. I mean, it's no cost to the city. So, so I think, you're, I think uh, a lot of to see a resolution, at least at the latest by the next meeting. Lifting the hiring freeze to do this operation. So, so you don't. Mark the, it's okay that you only have them part time in the summer, or when on holidays and stuff like that. Do you think you might be interested in 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 more part time people, since you're overworked, and maybe open, see if you can go back, see if they'd like to open up the contract, and maybe hire some part time people. No. And then that way you can you can use them at school when they're not there, but you can't use them. If if we could, well, it's going to come at no cost if we use it. Well, I know, but it's, we could get two for you know, two two part timers or three because you wouldn't have to worry about draining people on overtime and forcing people in because you'd have somebody that possibly. You know, though, I I can't. You know, talking about the contract and opening up the contracts on something I can discuss well, here. No, in no, I'm forum, just saying but. it just seems the reason if we're looking for bodies and more people mm -hmm. to shovel and help, then if we can use part time. On the other part of the year, because it's convenient to take the money from the school system, why is right, it but these okay are full-time officers who are are you indirectly no, around taking on part-time people in a way? Councilman Fisher, no. it sounds like you're talking about violating another contract, and I don't, I don't think we should even be having that discussion right now. Uh, the last contract uh, I think, violation. Well, I'd like to see eight. I think there was a mistake afford. given a contract that the city couldn't afford. Yeah, that, that was a mistake. Just, Order, order. I'm talking about the money, or I'm not talking about breaking the contract. I'm just saying if there's a possibility to get more people doing the work, that's what we want. Why wouldn't you? Order, or you're going to be removed. You could buy, you could get eight for the price of four. Well, that could that could be a that could be a discussion later, possibly. But well, but I'm going to have to negotiate that with the union first before we can have that conversation. Right. The, the conversation, the conversation well, at hand is I'm for not, three I'm paid police officers saying, that no one's saying is to the, the city. discussion at hand is the school district wants to hire three police officers. It, you know, they they should and they should have done it from the get go. Well, what? But they're doing it. Well, they're doing it now. I'm not I'm not fighting that. I'm saying if we can hire part, if we can take on part time with these three people, someone else is paying for. Indirectly, we're almost tip, taking part-time people. No, oh, there's still going to be full-time officers for the city. The so I think. I think uh, everyone should Bill keep in mind. City Will you I'm, be quiet? I'm looking for the bang for the buck. Quiet. Quiet. <laughs> order. Order. Quiet. So I think. I, Chief. Did you want to get a part-time officer to come in here and get this young lady under control? Two and a half, baby. Order, Nicole. You, you can't either, order me, man. Either I'm here because I'm allowed to. You can't make me leave and you can't make me do anything. or be removed. We're not going to open the contract. You guys yeah, you, you really don't want to order with the devil. I wouldn't well, either. I'm not having a conversation right now. Are we? So, so is it? I think everybody's in favor of this. Let's not, you know, dance around stuff. But there's no time frame in there. I mean, the school um, leaves June, middle of June. I mean, are you, you're not going to have officers in place by then. Have they given a time frame? Are they talking May. about? They, they. Yeah, so my, my concern would be I would like to talk to the school district sooner than later um, because if there's transfers out there, if I could get them working for us this summer, that's wonderful. That's a benefit to us. But if not, the next academy does start in August. So um, I got to start the canvassing process, backgrounds, interviews, and whatnot. So I really need to start that by July 1 to get them into that August police academy. Get it rolling, man. Yeah, I think we should uh, get this rolling. And, uh, is that something you could direct him to do? Since the, since the city council can't direct him because he is not our employee, is that something the city manager could direct our police chief to do? The department head, if we got four votes, we could. I, I would have to first request the hiring 
I'm exempt from the high increase to do that. So I can move forward. Yeah, so you yeah. can just, so you would just bring a resolution just like you did on tonight's meeting with whatever you work out with the school district. Sure. Exactly the same way it was done tonight. Yeah, I'll have something yeah. ready. For the uh, next meeting? Yes, I will have something ready, ready by next week. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. And that, that 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 means negotiating it well. I mean, you have one to work with already, so. Yes, I did also see some things that uh, may need to be enhanced in that uh, that contract. Um, I, I I did have a preliminary discussion with the police chief about it. Yes, we will we will actually enhance that contract because that doesn't factor into the price increases, yeah. annual increases. So we'll have to factor it because there's a three and a half percent increase uh, annual basis. Okay. It's not factored in that previous contract. So I, I will definitely look into that. It will be a, a, a fair contract for both the city and the school district. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. So Thank now you, we're at uh, new business. So old business. So old business, go ahead. Okay, one, uh, the members of uh, the VFW have come in the past asking that the, uh, the Vietnam uh, Memorial Wall Memorial uh, be moved to Group Park with the other uh, memorials. They, they've asked us before and we, we keep telling them, I think a couple of times they've come and asked uh, if we would move it so that they could be there for the Memorial Day uh, services and uh, Veterans Day, etc. And uh, I was hoping the member city staff would give them a call, make sure that they are behind it, and maybe uh, the DPW can get on it and move in that. So hopefully in time for Memorial Day, if they want it, then so, just something. I just didn't want it to flip away. I know every year around Memorial Day they bring it up. And we always say we're gonna we're gonna address it. It's a good time to talk. About it. I just want to talk about the re. Is this new business? Old we're an old business. Okay. So the Revale's old business, right? been around for a while sure go for it okay um dean does uh the council have any ability at this point in time to as uh one of our citizens suggested to modify what gar has done or to reject what gar has done i would not want to answer that question until we discuss that with the uh, incoming assessor uh, because there is a lot unknown here uh, we do not know the final assessment role is not yet ready and then even even after that there is uh, the grievance period and there is so <laughs> it's around august that's that's when we can really move forward with something Okay. So I would not want to um, move forward with it at this point of time. So we don't have any ability to do anything. I'd rather not jump the gun at this point, rather than we wait till the, what the final assessment is finalized. Okay. Uh, because we, we really, there's a lot of gray areas at this point. That's, that's the reason. And uh, so you want us to wait till August? That's that's the that's what the professional view is. About. And do we have any ability in August to do anything? Well, at, at that point, the city can decide on it because then you can look at the equalization rate, have the discussion. We will have a, a better understanding of what the the current the realistic situation is because at this moment, it's more or less uh, not finalized. And um, I asked you what the taxable assess the total role yes taxable assessed value was by gar and you said you didn't know that will be available on the 15th of next month 15th of yeah, next by the month 15th, yes why isn't it available now we know that uh, because it's not finalized yet. it's not uh, can i ask uh, andrea can you explain that situation but 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 there is a preliminary uh, the preliminary will be out on the 15th so um, according to the city's assessment calendar, we have to publish our tentative role um, <clears throat> on or before the second Monday in May, which is May 8th. So the all of the residents that are going through, the process is typically a two-step process where you get a letter of a change of assessment 
um, you have the ability to talk to the assessor and go through this stipulated request a stipulated agreement and then if you are still dissatisfied you can go to the board of assessment review and to request your assessment be lowered this year we have an additional step which is this informal review process that's ongoing right now with gar associates to get to the tentative role when the tentative role is finalized if you will um, then we will be able to give you what the uh, total assessed value is and it and that will be subject to change uh, before the filing of the final roll on or before August 1st. We don't have any, council doesn't have any authority to do anything at this time. I will defer to the city manager on that and his previous comments to council, but I will also confirm with real property and get you um, a definitive response on that. Yeah. I had the same question. Well, I, I'm, I, I'm not know, happy I like, like a lot of citizens with, with the process itself, and we're seeing it. We're getting a lot of complaints, and we're hearing it from a lot of people. At least I am. Are you? Yeah. Sure. You know, and, uh, and I think, you know, I'm looking at it today, and I'm trying to look at this big picture. It, it, we, we we hired a company and it, for a reason you know to try and get everybody on the same page right and 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 it's tough to do if they're not there looking at the property and everything else and and so i encourage everybody for this next week the deadline is the 28th to uh get your use this 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 week this time period to to tell the the gar people what it is that why they're wrong if you think they're wrong on your assessments i sent mine in today uh i think they were very wrong and i think there's a lot of people in this town that are feeling the same way and it's unfortunate and you know i think the idea was good there were several reasons for doing this and one of them was to have you know a non-bias get everybody on the same page sometimes non-bias is too non-bias and, and you actually have to look at the property rather than sky view or something like that and i think that's where a lot of the a lot of the problem is here with this with this process that's currently taking place if anything personally i'd like to see dates extended i'd like to see extra time added to uh the process for the informal review with gar i'd like to see uh probably a couple of days added uh in, in case the informal review doesn't work out to uh tax day i think it's june 13th to uh talk to the board because i think we're going to need it i think i think you got a town here that's that's up in arms well that's why i brought the whole issue up i uh you know when i voted to do a reval i i expected like a five percent across the board ten percent you know that's that's what i was told actually by staff you know that was the projection and um so I, I, I voted on that under that false assumption. And uh, so I was quite surprised. Um, and I've asked for the information that's being withheld from me. I, I think it's public information. And I appreciate citizens uh, like Mike uh, doing their own calculations. So I'm told that uh, through the grapevine, it's about a 34 or 35% increase, which I find astounding. I mean, that's that's an average. No, some people some some people are fifty percent, a hundred percent higher. Yeah, yeah. So I was intrigued. Uh, you know, just bear with me a little bit. So I was intrigued that that the percentage, the average, was so high. So I, I believe our Current role is two hundred and eighty-five million dollars, and the new role is three hundred and seventy-nine million dollars. So that's ninety-three million dollars, and it may even be higher than that. And that results in citizens paying an extra five million dollars in real property taxes to the three taxing jurisdictions, um, without any without any rate changes. And, and either way, it increases the assessments. And um, so I, I looked into it, and um, I, I, I don't mean to be coy or anything. I, I'm just curious, and I'm trying to gather information. So 
I think that we, the only opportunity that the city council has an opportunity to do anything at all is before the tentative assessment roll is established on May 8th, which is the answer I got when I asked it. So if you want to do something as a council, you need to do it now before the tentative assessment role is established, in my understanding. And um, that's not the answer I got. And I, I, I mentioned to Mike, or I read Mike's, I mean, Mike was calling for rejecting it or amending it to 10%. I don't know that you can do it to 10%, but I'm, I just think that's an awful lot of an increase in one year. And I, I don't have any problem rejecting it and voting that way, but we need to do it before May 8th. I don't think I'll have any support. That's perfectly fine. But um, that's my understanding of how the initial process works. So if anybody wants to discuss that or have a special meeting and vote on a resolution to limit that if we can, or um, reject it, I'm in favor of that. I'd like to add something, Councilman Reich. I understand the assessment assess, assessment values are not what we, we expected. Um, the, you alluded that we are withholding some information. The city, me or staff, are not withholding any information. Uh, we wouldn't. I wouldn't. I don't have the, the number to provide you. So what I know is that until the tentative role is filed, I don't have access to that information. Where so you I'm, well, Gar has a whole listing. I mean, they they know the number. And sure. The assessor but again, the number. It be, it so. Be. If you don't know the number, you, you got to work a little harder to get the number because it should be available to everybody. It's a public. It's a public. It's a public process. Uh, Councilman Raj, again, it is still. It, fluid. it is a very fluid. It's not finalized. I know it's not. But what happens? But what is people are asking for. Out, again, it's going to be a question. But like, why? It's not the right number. You know, so I, I can I, I mean, well, you I, have, you I have to have something for a conversation to discuss, or otherwise you don't you don't have an opportunity to do anything. I understand your but where you're coming from, Councilman. But we are not withholding any information from the council or the public. We are. I, I'm, I trust me. I'm very transparent in my government function, so I don't want you to accuse the staff. Would you uh, Would you say Would you say that Mr. Tooley's numbers are accurate? I don't confirm or deny anything. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I get I get several emails a day, like like Mr. Tooley's um, numbers, asking me to confirm or deny. But I cannot do that. I'm not able to do that. One is I don't have the. I I mean, I'm we are in the process of recruiting a, a new city uh, assessor. Once we have the professional guidance, maybe they will be able to provide it. I I don't have an assessment background myself. To be able to uh, give a professional opinion on that, and th and therein lies part of the problem. As Andrea stated, there's there's you get the letter, and you have a meeting with the assessor. Assessor, one of the complaints I'm hearing from the public is the assessor's not wasn't readily available. He couldn't get in here to a lot of citizens couldn't get in here to see the assessor. Now we've got we we've got a vacated office, so that just adds to the conundrum of the whole situation. That just compounds everything that we're dealing with with this citywide assessment so until we get mr teal in the office to be able to have citizens answers i tend to agree with both john and dan that we maybe need to extend if if possible i don't know if that's possible um quite frankly i'm of the opinion that we can legislate anything we want you know i mean it's proven to happen here <laughs> you know but with that being said no and i mean it sincerely uh you know but but really i mean you know to an extent you know we can legislate to to any activity going forward you know i mean let, let's face it no, you, you know can't. you can only, you only do it till the second well there's a time frame. second Monday. right right which and it would just which is two weeks away that's why I, yeah so that's why I, I tended to agree with you so with that being said you know you got to look at the city for what it is at this point right you know it's we're an indigent community we haven't had any new stick built and i don't know how long other than some uh some uh, uh, fabricated homes moving into some city lots. You know, our property taxes is our biggest piece of revenue, and you know that. And we don't have a lot of jobs for a lot of people to support our, our the housing. A housing program is something this council is going to 
I know that Councilor Reese and I and, and Scamperly and Kennedy and probably everybody else agrees. We need a housing program here in the city. We have homes that are old that need attention and uh, there has to be some kind of program to be able to bring these homes about. You know, that's for another road, that's for another time down the road, but the step process that we have, we've got to empty off and we've got an empty city hall, quite frankly, other than the city manager and Andrea holding it all down for us, you know, and, and Angela, I'm sorry, Angela. Um, you know, with that being said, you know, that's that's just the cold hard reality. So that's gonna have to be looked at down the road and, and sooner than later. Let me reach out to the town to be able to the office and I'll try, try to reach out to Brian Associates and see what we can do. And I'll report back to you as soon as possible. In terms of extension dates. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. I which it's not it's not the most preferred way, but if we have to extend it, that is council's prerogative. But the staff would not want to do that because we have uh, a precedence here and uh, we know 15 of AMA is the is when the taxes are due so just just you know what they call it. I'd be remiss if I left out our wonderful city clerk Kathy Jock <laughs> so in terms of this year's taxes yes May, fit, or May 15th uh, but not next, not till next. But not next year, and to, you know, to ask Gar to, to extend their their uh, public comments on their own property, the property owners' comments, perhaps another week or so. Uh, and it, it, I don't, I think that's somewhat reasonable in terms of you know we get these things. For example, I know I was off on vacation. It comes to my house, I didn't get it for a week later. A lot of people were, and and I just think. Other people may maybe aren't as good with technology, uh, things like that. We're not used to this process, and so and I think this very first step, where right now the deadline is this coming Friday, is probably the most important step uh, for people to get what they want taken care of, right right now. And with Gar, if Gar will listen, and and that needs to happen, and and then beyond that, you know what we can see. I agree with you. We can't jump to too many conclusions, but I think that's very important. But the but there is but there is an opportunity to in the next two weeks to actually meet the assessor. Well, meet and decide on how we want to proceed with this. Yes. Even before the the rest yeah. of the process goes through. So Yeah, I think it's 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 a very very valid uh, argument and also I feel that we also hit the perfect storm with uh, the, having the assessor resigning from the position. There is, there is a good call for the extension. I would agree. I'll get back to you on that. Thank you. Uh, does that? Uh, yeah. Just on a related topic, it is uh, the task force on payment in lieu of taxes met uh, on Thursday and I was surprised to learn that even though we had passed a home rule bill resolution um, and everything was filed there was an amendment uh, to the bill with, without my knowledge it wasn't brought to the task force and wasn't brought to the council um, and that exempted uh, the Bridge and Port Authority from the acreage and the, the payment in lieu of taxes. And, um, so I, I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about that, especially in light of increasing people's assessments by 100%, asking them to pay more taxes when you have businesses in the industrial park that have been there for 20 years and have never paid a penny of city, county, or school taxes. They've never contributed uh, any taxes at all. And there's a variety of businesses there. I don't, I don't know them anymore, but I know there are some that have been there for 20 years and it has nothing to do with economic development. And you're, you're basically subsidizing a state operation and you're asking these people to subsidize it by increasing their assessments. So I would hope you would reconsider. I, I don't support the amendment. 
and I won't when it comes when you bring it back. I can't I, I can't do that. Just doesn't seem right to me. And uh, so that's 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 where I stand on that. The amendment that came out was to remove the was to remove contaminated properties from the actual resolution, which was from what I understand, according to my conversation, which I shared with you at the task force meeting, when I stepped out to take his call from Assemblyman Gray, was the fact that we don't have two same as bills. Well, there was two same as There was, yeah. but Gray the amended the it amendment, to remove the, the contaminated the properties. Any, the contaminated. No, 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 it's nothing to do with contaminated. It, the amendment covers all authority prior. It has nothing to do with contaminated property. And the fact, and it also included some of the language for the Bridge and Port Authority as the governor's office responded, saying that they weren't going to support that entity for properties that were there that received deals probably back when you were employed there. Yeah. You know, with that being said, you know, um, that received these tax deals. And there's the hang up, which, which calls for the amendment to allow the Bridge and Port Authority to be exempt from the properties that we're looking to collect the taxes from. Make basically the vacant and-, and I just, as you know, I, I worked in economic development for a long time, yeah, and I worked for the authority, common knowledge, I'm a city councilor now, so. No, I, I'm not done. <laughs> and, uh, but, so, but ultimately, I mean, that's another aspect for us to be able to look at state government and say, we're asking you to foot the bill for all these properties. Look what they're look what they're enduring. Yeah, we well, pay their fair but, fair. but that that can help with the legislation, John. That can help push that over. Well, the yeah. line. All I'm saying is I'm not supporting, supporting the amendment. amendment. Yeah, and um, yeah, I, I just don't think it's fair, and I and I find it to be a, a really odd anomaly because there are other economic development organizations like the St. Lawrence County Industrial Development Agency, which this, you guys on the council before I got here, entered into a payment and little taxes agreement with them. So every project that they do, whether it's in Canton, Potsdam, Messina, Governor, those communities all get a pilot from those businesses. That's e that's economic development. Nobody gets, nobody does it for free. Um, and that, that's true of the Jefferson County development agencies so i i think augensburg is an anomaly and uh i i just can't support the amendment i don't i i just i think we need to take it one step at a time i i have a schedule i am plan on meeting with senator walls this week i'm Good. heading down tomorrow i plan on meeting with him at some point we're hoping to have a budget state budget by the sometime this week it's kind of looking that way hopefully he, his calendar lightens up a little bit for me to be able to get in there and talk to him and I'll see what his hang up is related to the amendment, if he's got a hang up. No, he doesn't. I talked I, I talked to him. He he said he would never amend without talking to us first. So I, I don't know why that came about. I don't know who did it. I didn't have I didn't have a vote on it. Didn't go to the task force. So but here's the thing, we we know that it's not gonna fly unless we exempt the bridge board We already know that. We're told that. Honestly, All the more reason to maybe bring one of their board members on to this task force. Right. And, and they want a board member in the task force. The, the well, I didn't say that, is, but I just think it's a good, yeah, good idea. Yes, I think we talked about it. But they're, we did. they're partners, and I think <coughs> we can get a pilot payment from New York State for their property at least. So the governor's as office, a, as a first the governor's step. office talked to you two, and they're going to pass the bill. No, I'm telling there. you what Scott. I, I told you this. Well, that's Scott right. told me. in my mouth, John. Well, that's what you just said. No, no I said they're no. they're not going to support it with the OBPA on there. Oh, that's a that? big difference than saying. Scott Gray told me that before. Thursday, that, that right, right some, while we were meeting at the task force. Someone, meeting. I went back in and reported all this about to the task force. You know, we had Citizen at the meeting, listening, taking notes. Yeah. And, uh, well, we didn't talk and about I just it. think, you know, it it, if it, our best chance of getting it is to do just that. Take them out, exempt them. It all happened like that. You know? Get them with us, the Bridge and Port Authority. Then they'll pass a resolution supporting us, and I think the state will at least entertain it. So you want to like? So there's businesses that haven't paid taxes in 20 it's, years. It's not even a part of my thought process, other than yes, would I like them to pay taxes? 
Who would? Okay, well, well right that's, now, that's what I'm looking at. A, I'm looking at a that's pilot the bill did from New York investment. State. I'm looking at a pilot from New York State. I don't think. I don't think. And you're saying, ah, well, if you're not going to include these ones, we don't want any paper. And that's just wrong. no problem. Because I don't want some paper. The problem well, is get it, get it in writing from the state. That's, I, I mean, that's yeah. Just, yeah. We're asking as a local government to bring in taxes for vacant state-owned right, property. Well, if the problem is, John, and now let's get into the weeds now. We can, we might as well just disband it now if we're going to bring the state authorities into this. I don't give up that easy. Yeah, we will get it done this year. You're going to bring in the state authorities and, and the governors are, according to Gray, and I'll get more clarity from Walzik and, and we'll see where we're at. I mean, did what did he say about Walzik say? About his conversations related to the bill, he had no he had no knowledge of it. And the staff had no knowledge of it. He introduced it. He had no knowledge of, of the, the amendment. amendment. Yeah. But what's he saying about the bill as it stands now? As soon as you guys figure out what you want to do, I said I already knew what I wanted to do. Somebody else changed it. <laughs> and Gray changed it, huh? So we'll get clarity from Gray again. Yeah. Invite him to the next council meeting. Remote. I can I talk now. to him on Saturday. And uh, we sat down, had a little dinner together, and uh, and we talked about that. And it's not going to fly. If the OBPA is on there, it's yeah. not going to fly. Period. We it, it has to be removed for now, and then we can look at the state giving us a pilot payment. But a no vote from this board without doing that, we'll we'll get nothing. That is exactly what Mike said: abandoning the whole project. We can't have a no vote. The Augsburg Bridge and Port Authority has to support us. Along with the school district, and they already have, and and in the county, and they have to support us. All these entities have to be 100% on board, or we're not going to get anything. And you can say, well, I don't like this little aspect, so I'm not going for it. You just blow the whole deal, and that's the way it works. So, mm. I mean, you know that. Come on, we talked about this. I I, I do kind of know how it works. I worked in the state legislature for six years. So, and then maybe yeah. after that we can. It's a whole different more. time now, man. Yeah. Believe me, you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good stories, though. Let's see what happens. Stories. Yeah. Okay. Um. Everyone done with the whole business? Yeah. Any uh, business for Any new business? Um, I'd like to um, inform that city of Augsburg will be celebrating its 152nd birthday soon and I would like to have something happening this weekend so it's a little um, too soon to organize something but I am working with my staff and some volunteers here to get something going so that we have some celebrations uh, to celebrate the birthday. Okay. And, uh, if there is anything that the city council wants to add I'm Bring that to, uh, to the staff. Excellent. Thank you. Thanks. Um, items for discussion. Yeah, I've got one real quick here. It just and correct me. Um, each resolution has is as it's mapped out, and this might be a better question for Kathy. And it says approved as to form by city attorney, and there's a line under that. Is that sent over to him to, for him to sign off on? My understanding, sir, that when there's new legislation being proposed, that the city attorney renders an opinion at that time um, for boilerplate resolutions, um, items that come before council on a regular, annual, quarterly, whatever basis, that we're, there's not any major changes. It does not go. What it says is approved as to form um, is the format of the resolution, but content is a separate matter. And it's traditionally done when it's a new subject matter. I'd like to have each resolution and its content reviewed by the city attorney before being brought forward to us and having him sign off on it or have the language changed to say, you know, much like it's approved by city manager for submittal, not necessarily boilerplate stuff, but uh, anything uh, that, you know, I mean, I, I've seen the guy once in three and a half years. You know, he came in here on crutches, you know, um, and I, I'd just like to see some, some, sign-offs and check-offs on that as, as a matter of course i, I mean I, I hope he's reviewing all the any agreements and like you know that we have contracts yeah Con right. yes sir okay <clears throat> it's my understanding that yeah. he does yeah. <clears throat> that it's not like boilerplate items 
things they have they go through. That's what was my yeah. understanding of it. I had a, uh, a citizen uh, question how they can apply for the boards that the city makes appointments to. And uh, are they personally asked, or is there a spot on the website where if somebody's interested, if you know there's an open seat, that they can send in a resume or something like that? I think the best person to answer this question is Andrea. Because Andrea uh, had the same question. We were in a while ago, and uh, we had a friend who also asked the same question. I'd ask Andrea to respond to the question about the appointments to the board. <laughs> Um, so traditionally, the, they're handled a little bit differently. They almost are always, vacancies are addressed at the board or committee level. Um, most of our commissions, although not all of them, boards and commissions have an application uh, that is to be filled out and submitted to the respective department head that oversees that board or commission. Um, and then they're reviewed and submitted to the city manager and ultimately to council for consideration. For the planning board and zoning board, we have, um, which we've historically had a difficult time filling, we've gone as far as doing um, press releases and legal notices to try to solicit um, participation from the public. Board members have asked people they think would be good candidates. Um, planning board and zoning board are probably have been hard to fill in the past. There seems to be some more interest in joining and participating in boards and commissions presently, which is nice uh, to see, but that definitely is not typically the case. Um, so uh, you can look at our website under the respective board or commission to see if there's a formal application and who that should be submitted to. I know there's been a lot of discussion recently about the Arts Commission. Um, that I would say is maybe a little bit more defunct in that it is overseen by the Director of Parks and Recreation in accordance with our charter and we have not had a Director of Parks and Recreation for the last three years. So um, <clears throat> we did inform members of the public that have inquired about that if they wanted to complete the application and submit it to me, I would work with them and get the appropriate information to the city manager and to council. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, to add to that, uh, yes, I mean, some things, some appointments like the assessment assessment with the board, they, there are some prerequisites or qualifications that needs to be met. So it's uh, it's kind of like you can apply as well as we need to make sure they're ready to make sure that they are qualified. I think the biggest thing uh, it seemed was they wanted to pay, they want to be able to find it on the website. Sure. Where, where is their vacancies? What am I interested in? Things of that nature, which is, as Andrew said, great because in the past we've been, I know, much difficulty sometimes getting people to serve on the board. So. Sure, I, I will also make sure that any uh, openings, apart from our website, we also have a social media presence. Mm -hmm. We will make it a known in some such uh, uh, vacancies and horizons. Excellent. Thank you for that. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, and this brings us to citizens' participation. This time, anyone attend in person? Please come to the podium. You have two minutes. Just quickly, you were talking, John. I'm glad you brought the thing up about Gar. First of all, I had had two or three conversations with them. I was a little disappointed that they didn't have an office here to, to be, you know, here in, in, in the building. But uh, I keep getting told that when, uh, the 28th is the deadline, but we're not going to know as a taxpayer to the middle to the middle of May or after if they are going to do anything for, for each individual. So if you've got to pass something May 8th, how can we do that when Gar hasn't even got back to the taxpayers if they're going to reduce it or not? So that's I think that's a problem, all right? And the second thing I'd like to, to address is uh, the SRO officer. Uh, said September 1st, up till two weeks ago, said September 1st, I've worked in a school district full time. They finally found a phys ed teacher to replace a full time teacher. But I witnessed Officer Shaver right here sitting here last year, last uh, in the fall. I've witnessed him more than once, okay, doing his job. 
I've witnessed him talking to students. I've witnessed him in meetings. I've witnessed him taking kids down, okay? Because there's a fight, there's a problem, okay? It's very, very valuable, all right? I've watched him in, in the uh, lockdowns, okay? They, they do a great job. And, you know, the school district is gonna pay for that. A couple of weeks ago, I, I watched Officer Lane, okay? There was a threat and he had to physically restrain somebody. It's, it, it, it's and you know, if, if you have any adults at all sitting at that table, I don't know who did. You in favor of it, Councilor Dobo? Mike, you might be in favor of it, right? Steve? You don't know. Well, why don't you guys, Kevin Kendall would be glad to have you guys go out for a day or two. I know you two guys went out and talk taxes, all right, which is great. But go out there and sit there and watch these guys in action. And maybe you'll have a little different opinion of that position. Uh, Michael Tooley again. I appreciate the discussion on reassessment. Uh, I think my perspective is important to remember that GAR is not the assessor. GAR is the consultant to the assessor, and currently now the acting assessor is Stephen T. And this might be asking the impossible. But while council may not have the uh, the standing to legislate anything to do with numbers on, on what assessments might be, you haven't been shy about expressing opinions. And perhaps you might move an opinion forward to try to persuade the ass assessor to conclude that the size of the increases of these assessments in the city are, are, are too high and, sh and should direct GAR during the in informal review process to reduce all the increases by X percent. Now, my suggestion was 70 percent, whatever whatever reaches the consensus of council. But I would try to get that, you know, get GAR on board before the new the new numbers go out. Because if we stay where we are now, I mean, there's gonna be people from here to the armory lined up on grievance day. The time to make a significant adjustment is now. Thank you. Yeah, I don't. I don't know that we can intervene in in talking with the assessor in the process. I, I don't know if we can. We're going to need a legal opinion on that, but we can legislate something at least reject it. But I'm not sure about dictating what percentage the increase is going to be. I, I don't know the answer. To that. Yeah, I think that's what the discussion with the and actually after the year, you know, well, May eighth is a critical date. Uh, in that, along those lines, do you think you want to have a special council? Probably as soon as we, yeah, as soon as we get the information. I don't I don't know that there's any support um, for rejecting. Yeah, I I, I I don't have any problem with that, but uh, I don't know. I had nobody else has said it. No. And this is about the GAR assessment as well. Um, I have a 94 year old dad, so when he called the number. <laughs> Um, and was told he had to go online. <clears throat> Obviously, he couldn't do that. And so I'm a little bit worried about all of the elderly in the community um, being able to facilitate this process. And I'm just wondering, is there anything set up to help them do that? Kind of like an advocate, an advocate or somebody who can help them? I, I haven't heard of anything. I don't know if staff made any. Yeah, that was the main. Uh, we had an issue with <coughs> somebody in all these to help with situations like what your dad is. And that's what we want to work forward, have somebody here. And hopefully when we have a new assistant, he will be here. So your your dad can meet him. So please be having that. That your complaint is pretty common. We have I'm sure, yeah. Um, but I'm curious if that if that deadline is this Friday that, and that, those or elderly don't <coughs> make the deadline, what happens for I'm, them? I'm going to pro probe that. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Because that means you're gonna like argue. Yeah. That. As, we, okay. as I mentioned, yes, this is a perfect storm situation. Like, there is nobody I can go and ask him because there is you don't have a assessor at this moment. Okay. So, uh, and and good guy and associates also does not want to get involved because it will be a conflict of interest for them to assess as well as come to a conclusion. It is. That's why we need to have the third party and assessor to be. 
Okay, right. And I just want to say, like, my assumption was, and everyone, I hear everyone saying, you know, that they're all mad at you guys. And uh, my assumption was that oh, this is city council, but I'm not hearing that. I'm hearing from everybody so far real, real support for the people on this. So that's mm -hmm. awesome. Any idea when the new assessor starts? Uh, I think uh, the best date he would be able to start is May 3rd. Uh -huh. From what I heard. Is, is he the county guy, too? No. He's not Elizabeth. Okay. So that's Wednesday. Elizabeth and county, I think. Five days before. May 2nd? I, I, I would say May 2nd. May 2nd. <laughs> would, would, would we possibly get any assistance to the county assessor on this? There, there is no county assessor. Yeah, yeah without, without, yeah, 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 understood. Yeah, understood. And we also had, we were trying to get the, um, an in-house in staff trained to that position, but they, it was too much risk at this point to take that risk at this moment. I was listening and writing a lot of notes during the meeting, so the, they're kind of more on bullet points than they are in paragraph form like they were before. Um, as far as celebrating Ogdensburg birthday, I like to volunteer for something, I don't know what. Um, yeah, and, um, thanks to everyone who spoke during the public appearance tonight. Um, may I assure you that what Doug said earlier during his five minutes does indeed speak for more than just him, me. I would, I, I'll second that. I would imagine you'll have some thirds, fourths, fifths, et cetera, um, because, and I think he, he outlined very clearly why we feel that way. You folks on city council are parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, Etc. You know what I mean, and I think it's it's repugnant the message and legacy that you're leaving for your littles, your grand littles, your nieces, your nephews, your children. It's terrible the lack of trust that um, the city has in you. Even something like tonight, where we I talked about the freeze from the meeting of the sixth, the hiring freeze, and but there are a couple of resolutions that we're able to go through, which is great. I, I actually agree with that, but because it's convenient and, and things that you guys want, they go through. So I think that you need to really rethink when you're doing things that sound to us that they are retaliatory. Um, let's see. The SRO, yes, yes, but we really, I really support that in a huge way, especially the way that um, Chief Kearns explained it tonight about how the officers would be able to be used during um, non-school time. Thank you. Is there you. anyone else? Thank you for that. Anyone attending remotely? Yeah, I mean, uh, about uh, along with that, you know, if anybody is in the music scene, with the dancing scene, entertainment, we are looking for that kind of uh, support as well. The first individual. Oh, I'm off. sorry, we, it looks like we have one more, oh, Kathy. Go ahead. Come on. Hello, I'm Bill Delap. Uh, you got to be quicker. <laughs> I, was, I was stalling there. Uh, I'm a transplant. Oh, I worked in um, the assembly in Albany. I worked with Senator Ritchie. I lived here for five years. It's a very nice community. I'm looking to purchase a home here, but taxes are like a thousand dollars. And you know, I've got family in Syracuse, Bayville, they don't pay that. Uh, so I'm probably gonna end up moving elsewhere. And I think people who have the means are going to leave if the taxes go up as much as they're projected to. So I mean you really gotta consider that. Just wanted I mean, to get that out there. And I, I like the community. I've been saying, I that, I've been saying that for three and a half years, and you're the first person to acknowledge it. Thank you. <laughs> so that's all I have. Thanks. Thanks, Bill. Uh, Kathy, is there anyone else? Yes. The first individual is registered as Penny Shero, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears your line is open. A number of different items I would like to speak on, but of course, I won't have time. Um, the uh, timing of the 
receiving those assessments was pretty poor. Uh, it's almost uh, it looks like it's intentional. We haven't even gotten our tax bills for this year, and we're getting the assessments projected for our houses for next year. Things that haven't, you know, people that haven't even done anything to their houses are being their taxes are being raised. When I require when I requested the four houses they compared me to, rather than drive around the city and look for one that looks like it, they sent me four that were absolutely ridiculous. Their size, their, their footage was different. Their assessments were higher. How can you fight something like that when those are the four they, they it's like they pulled them out of a hat and gave them to you. I, if they extend, there could be an extension on this because it, like you said, it was a, uh, the timing, spring break and the uh, taxes being paid and everything else going on. I think the 28th is a little uh, ridiculous. It's a little, uh, I, I don't know, it's just crazy. That's not enough time and for the elderly even, including me, whatever, um, to have the time to find and get the information they need to even file the informal request. Gar Associates is calling the shots. We pay them, they are consultants. Why should they be calling the shots? I don't get it. Maybe you can get the extension. I think that would be advisable for a lot of people to come get this help that you say is going to be available. To me, the SRO officer, that's a no-brainer. I guess that's a poor word to use, but whatever. Uh, they provide a wonderful service at the school. The kids can relate to them. They can see that they aren't the bad guys anymore, all right? You need to worry about the safety of our kids nowadays. Not whether you're gonna hire a retired officer or this or that or the other thing. The school's gonna pay for it, jump on it. And that gives us the extra people on the street when we need it. That's just, that's common sense. And I would hope that you do act on Doug's resolution that he presented earlier. And that made a lot of sense. Thank you. Anyone else? The next individual is registered as Geraldine Klein, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears your line is self-muted. Geraldine Klein, it appears your line is self-muted. Would you like me to circle back, Mayor? Yes. The next individual is registered as Gregory McNamara, and I will unmute that individual now. It appears your line is self-muted. appears your line is open, sir. Hello, can everyone hear me? Yes, sir. Great. Uh, as far as the uh, SRO officers, I, I'm shocked that we're arguing about, you know, the county would pay for it or, or provide that. It's a no-brainer, just just go with it they're going to be paid for it. the city doesn't going to pay well yeah you're right mayor the school is going to pay for it but they're they went out on a limb you you say that the county won't work with you and you've you've gone after the school they're going out on a limb here in my opinion and you're just you're still just being a, a little kid in a temper tantrum kind of like these other resolutions too you, you don't make a hiring freeze about something and then make your own little special resolutions that are stipulations to go around a hiring freeze it means a hiring freeze so what you did technically isn't the definition of a hiring freeze uh and i want to thank uh mr buhari for uh contacting me and letting me know that in the future uh my constitutional rights won't be violated by the city and that uh under his leadership, I don't have to worry about what happened to me last summer. I uh, appreciated him reaching out to me and uh, acknowledging that. It was a very simple gesture, and uh, I have a lot of respect for him. I don't for that. That that was huge to me. Uh, so I want to thank him for that. Have a good night. It appears as though someone is trying to log in, Mayor. It's, the system's waiting for a name with an ID number assigned. I'll make a motion. Do you have an executive session? Would you like me to move on, Mayor? Yes. Okay. I do not see any other hands. We do have a need for executive session to discuss proposed pending 
or current litigation and to discuss the medical, financial, credit, or employment history of a particular person or corporation or matters leading to the appointment, <clears throat> employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of a particular person or corporation. <clears throat> Uh, <clears throat> Kathy, would you please call the roll? Councillor Kennedy? Yes. Councillor Powers? Yes. Councillor Reesh? Yes. Councillor Scamperly? Yes. Mayor Scali? Yes. Councillor Dillaba? Yes. Councillor Fisher? Yes. Approved. We do not uh, anticipate any action from following executive session, so I will make a motion to adjourn from executive session. Okay. All in favor? There's two different sessions. Or no, 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 there's not. There was a change. Oh, okay. Okay. All in favor? Missed, Mayor, I missed Aye. the second. A bill. Thank you, sir. Opposed? Adjourned. Is it 900 degrees in here? Because I am having a hot lunch. It is.